Hello, we are here in Paris with Anthony Fauci, who, as you know, is the director of the National Institute of uh, Allergy and Infectious Diseases at the NIH in, in the US. And uh, I'm pleased to say that he is one of the founding fathers of uh, research in HIV. So it's a real honor for us to have you here, Tony. It's my pleasure. And today you gave, a, a, as usual, a wonderful talk. And I was a little bit surprised because you used the term that I, I saw in HCV, SVR. Right. Could you explain about yeah. that? The reason I now use the terminology sustained virological remission is that there's a lot of confusion in the field about what a cure means. I mean, people talk about a functional cure, which means you don't really eradicate the virus. And people have been called functional cures only to rebound months later or years later. We saw that with the Mississippi baby. Right. We saw that in some of the people in the Visconti study. So rather than to get into the confusion of what a cure is, and there are very few cures. In fact, the only really documented cure is Timothy Brown, who is sure. the famous Berlin patient. So I would like to get the field to start being, to talk about variable durations of time from when you stop therapy to the time the virus rebounds or not. So that's why I call it sustained virological remission. And that may be for months or it may be for years. And I think as we learn more and more, we'll figure out ways to extend that period of time. And do you think that it might be forever? You know, if you're talking about an art-free remission, mm -hmm. um, an art-free remission means you don't want to be on ART. I think one of the possible ways of having an art-free remission that looks promising is to get the passive transfer of combinations of broadly neutralizing antibodies. And if we manipulate them well enough, we may be able to give it subcutaneously. We may be able to give it every six months instead of every two months. If we can do that, it is conceivable that you can have what's technically an art-free remission where you substitute antibodies for art. Now, the ultimate aspirational goal would be to do that and ultimately stop everything. Mm -hmm. And that's going to be difficult, but I think in some people we'll be able to do that. And uh, if we are talking about other type of interventions like the biological products, the, the zoom apps, you right. know, uh, you, you showed some, some challenging and interesting information regarding that. Could you briefly comment? On? Yeah, yeah. What, what we found in, in monkey models, and uh, we're going to be doing it in humans now, is that in some circumstances, when you passively transfer monoclonal antibodies during the acute phase of infection, even when the monoclonal antibodies disappear from the circulation, it seems to induce an HIV-specific immune response that continues to suppress the virus even after the antibody goes away. I was a collaborator in a study that was led by Malcolm Martin and Michelle Nutzenzweig that was published in Nature just a couple of months ago that showed in non-human primates when they treated them with antiretrovirals acutely and then stopped the antiretroviral, the virus always rebounded. But when they treated them with a monoclonal broadly neutralizing antibody during acute infection and then stopped it, the virus didn't rebound. And they found out that they had induced CD8 positive T cells. So that's a real clue that maybe you're able to induce an immune response by manipulating the immune system very early in the course of infection. So I think that's... So our hope for SVR is, right. is really... An, a, in some way in the, in, in the next future, and uh, I really commend you for your efforts in this regard. Well, I hope so. I hope it works. And thank you very much for joining my, us. My pleasure. It's a pleasure to see you.